Hello and welcome to um, Spinster's Parental Living Room. I'm Claudia and this is my review and discussion of the novel Marriage by Susan Edmondson Ferrier. This is the second book that I've read for my 1818 novel project where I read and review six novels that were published exactly 200 years ago. Marriage is a novel in two volumes. The first one is all about Lady Juliana who's a very spoiled, very selfish young woman who marries an impoverished Scottish nobleman called Henry Douglas against the wishes of her father. So she elopes with him to Scotland where she moves in with his family in a sort of dilapidated Scottish castle in the middle of the Highlands. She finds herself in that situation and hates everything about it from his relatives, which include three hilarious maiden aunts and five unmarried sisters-in-law, to the landscape, to the society there. Anyway, she ends up giving birth to twin daughters and then escapes back to London with one of them, her favourite, while leaving the other daughter behind. In London, she moves in with her own brother, whose wife has just recently left him. And then she continues her life there while her husband's off with the army, I think, abroad. The second volume is about the other rejected daughter called Mary, who grows up in Scotland with her aunt and then goes down to London to live with her mother for a bit. While she's there, she meets her family. So that's her mother, Lady Juliana, her twin sister, Adelaide, and her cousin, Lady Emily. Mary finds it difficult to adjust to life in London she doesn't handle the rejection of her family very well because Lady Juliana doesn't really care about her at all and neither does her twin sister. So the only friend she has is Lady Emily, who's this really kind of sarcastic, gossipy sort of person, almost like a meaner version of Elizabeth Bennet. At least that's what she reminded me of in the book. So Mary and Emily become friends and a lot of the book is based on their conversations with each other. Mary herself is a very quiet, virtuous, naive sort of main character who believes in the best in everyone and has the patience of an angel and is the exact opposite of the rest of her family in London. So much for a brief summary. This book was very different than I had expected. I went into this with no knowledge of the plot whatsoever and the only thing I knew about the book is that the author is often compared to Jane Austen. She's often called the Scottish Jane Austen. However, from the very first page, I noticed a, a difference in style. Um, Austen's writing is, is very subtly sarcastic, very gently poking fun at society. Whereas Susan Ferrier's writing is very sharp and, and biting and really <laughs> directly criticising the main characters that she's created. For example, in the first volume, these are the reasons that, that Lady Juliana's father gives for her marrying a duke rather than someone she actually likes. She shall marry for the purpose for which matrimony was ordained amongst people of birth, that is, for the aggrandizement of her family, the extending of their political influence, for becoming, in short, the depository of their mutual interests. So obviously, this is what marriage was like in that time for certain people and Jane Austen doesn't really skirt around that but she definitely doesn't declare it as bluntly as that. Apart from the style, the biggest surprise was how little the characters changed in the course of the book. Again, if we look at Austen's novels, it's all about the main characters learning and developing and making compromises in their relationships to each other. Whereas the characters in marriage pretty much stay as they are at the beginning of the book. They are still fantastically written. Some of them are absolutely hilarious, like the spinster aunts. They are some of my favourites in the book. Some are real villains, like Lady Juliana, who is the protagonist of the first novel, and then a minor character in the second volume. She is just evil in a very believable way. But none of them really change much. And the development of the story don't seem to affect their personality a whole lot. The story is driven by its themes, like obviously marriage, but even there I was surprised, because men don't feature much at all. They, they certainly don't have any substantial roles, like you might imagine with a book of that title. Like, the first husband we meet is poor Henry Douglas, who ends up marrying Lady Juliana and then is shipped off to war for most of the story. 
and and even the love interests of the second generation in the second volume uh, they're very two-dimensional flat sort of characters they get very little screen time overall so the focus really is not on the relationship between men and women but how that relationship affects the women in the marriage or in the courtship or whatever it is like lady juliana is our first negative example she is very young when she marries for love and to spite her father and it's made very clear that she is too naive to know th what love is and she loses interest in her husband very very quickly after she sees the sort of poverty that she is expected to live in she regrets her marriage almost instantly then there's her daughter Adelaide the favorite daughter who is in love with her cousin but ends up marrying a duke for the money and the title of course she also regrets it almost instantly and ends up eloping with said cousin after less than a year of marriage therefore causing a scandal that has a big effect on her family so like this we see a lot of examples of how a marriage can go bad in very different ways even the minor characters we see a lot of examples of bad marriages and it's sometimes played for drama sometimes played for comedy and it's very clear that the author wants to tell us about what went wrong in these marriages another theme of the book in my opinion is motherhood and the way that mothers interact with their children and influence them again lady juliana being our worst example is an absolutely awful parent to both of her daughters the first daughter she kind of superficially dotes on and spoils but there is no true love between them and then the second daughter she just straight up neglects you can tell that she clearly didn't want children and that she resents them from the moment of their birth she makes no secret of the fact that she much prefers her menagerie of dogs and, and birds that follow her around everywhere there's one scene where either Adelaide or Emily try and explain to Mary why she can't expect any true love from their mother. They tell Mary that she can't be expected to be treated like a dog by Lady Juliana, which obviously in this case means she can't be expected to receive any love and devotion from her mum like she bestows on her dogs. Mrs. Douglas, who is the aunt who raises Mary in Scotland, is the opposite of that. She's our good mother, so she's the positive example. She teaches her morals and goes to church with her and raises her into a woman who knows what's good and what's bad. Then another example we see is Mrs. Lennox, who's a widow who Mary visits. She has lost her husband and her other children and is absolutely devoted to her last remaining son. And she wants nothing more than for him to marry someone who she approves of and who will make him a good wife, aka Mary in this case. So she resorts to some very clumsy matchmaking. This book is very much driven by its themes and observations of people who are then turned into some more and some less believable characters, but all just fascinating and wonderful to read about. There are so many quotes that I've highlighted in this book just because they describe it perfectly, the more ridiculous sides of human nature and she really captures that so well. Her style is very sharp, very funny and very readable. I gave this book four stars and I would recommend it to someone interested in reading a very different sort of courtship novel someone who's just interested in early 19th century society and any fan of Jane Austen's work. I wanted to give a big thank you to Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventure and Marissa from Blatantly Bookish for reading this book with me. This was my first ever buddy read and I really enjoyed having those Twitter conversations with you. I'm really grateful that you went through this with me and I hope you enjoyed the book as much as I did. So now I just need to thank you for watching and say goodbye.